What's up guys? Welcome back to Real Reefing TV. I'm Cody Grates, where I help you save time, money, and frustration in the real reefing hobby, sharing my experiences and knowledge. In this series on this epic reef tank build, we've been getting to know uh, Tim a little bit and his 525XL Red Sea Reefer. And it's sitting right here behind me in all of its glory and it's wet and it's salty and it's awesome. And um, we're just gonna talk to him a little bit more. There's some new updates, new things that he's bought for the tank and some new things that he's put in the tank. So we're gonna hear from Tim and uh, see a little bit more about what's going on in this 525XL. Stay tuned. All right, so Tim, thank you so much for letting me come back and film this a little bit more, getting some super saucy shots of the Aquascape and some of the new stuff that you put on this tank. And we've already gone over a lot of the equipment that you bought, like, like the Ecotech uh, uh, Radions, the Vortex, and the, the Vectra Pump, the Nio Skimmer, the Torx. You did, however, buy another Torx, right? Correct, so now I got three of them. Three of them, why'd you go three? Because uh, I'm running the bio pellets and then I am doing GFO separate and then we had a little issue with the carbon being too small So I bought a separate third one to put in the little filter bag. Okay, so that way it doesn't like just Skew go out, out the place, top. Yeah. yeah, all right, sweet um, So tell me you've got some life in here now. Yeah, I did pick up a pair of the Frostbit clowns You'll see there's two of them in here. I did pick up a uh, about five or six of the snails okay. and two of the emerald crabs. Just turbos? Turbos, yeah. Just to get a small little cleanup crew in there. Pick up the little detritus on the bottom. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the, the clowns that you got. So you said they're frostbite, but what, um, are they like a pair? Did you get them to- like, No, I did buy them individually, but they did come kind of two separate sizes. So it's almost like they're almost designated for the male and the female already. Right. They pretty much stayed together. So I think they're pretty close to being paired up pretty soon. Yeah. So tell us like your like what you're thinking about this tank. It's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't wait. The whole build was awesome. Just to get it wet, get it salty, get some life in the tank. I couldn't be happier, man. It's, it's a dream tank to me. We did all high-end equipment, high-end everything from lights to filtration. There's no doubt about that. We just added the auto top off as well by Apex. So I was able, you see in here, there is no auto top off anymore. So we have a lot more room there. And that was my goal, just to have everything open. Yep. You know? And it's like, it's just, it's so sleek, so sweet. Um, if you guys want a list of the equipment and everything that Tim has on this tank, I do have a list of all of that down in the description of this video down below. So you guys can definitely check that out and, uh, and see all of those. Thank you, Tim, for, no for going through my links. Oh yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting Real Reefing TV, I appreciate that. In, as far as flow goes, we talked about when we were putting the plumbing together on this thing, like that, it was just funky how that nozzle just came straight, straight out of there. Yeah. And uh, so you made some modifications to that. Yeah, I did buy the dual return there. What are they called? The V? The lock line? Lock line, yep. Yep. So that made it as like the, what do they call that? The optimal flows on the end as well. Okay, so you're talking about the uh, the VCA adductors. Yeah. That have the um, the variable flow. The variable flow, yeah. Yeah. That's what they call it. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. I saw them in uh, Reef of Palooza earlier this year, and um, and basically the way that it works is like the pressure just switches from one to the next, and it's yeah. so random yeah. um, just by the, the way that it shapes the, the water going through it. It also made it too, because I was considering possibly adding MP10 on the back side to kind of a couple little dead zones in the bottom there, but I like it because I'm able to point those towards the corners as well. So it'll save me from, I might go more pumps, but we'll see. But for right now, it puts enough flow to where I think the tank will be all right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely once you start getting more corals in here, you're gonna end up, it's gonna get blocked. Yeah. And so you'll need to add some more flow. Um, I really think that uh, if you had um, like just some 1K, some like gyre, 1K gyres coming off that back, yeah. That would add just a little bit of a different flow from front to back yeah. and, and lift off the any detritus that might, because you'll still have some spots where it'll settle in the back corners there. Yeah. So I think that would definitely lift it off the back. So down the line, I'm going to be adding the Apex Stow system as well. So okay. I got that in the box. We're going to kind of wait until we get some corals in the system. Yep. Kind of undecided what I'm going to dose so far. I also got the- My suggestion, 
would be the ESV. If you're just gonna do two part, yeah. it's just do the ESV uh, bionic system because that has the trace elements in it. Yeah. So, cause I know you're planning on not doing water changes on this system. Yeah. If, if at all, but very infrequently. So my suggestion would be to do that because that way you're, you're, you're dosing your calcium, your alkalinity, but then in each part, it has um, some a subset of the trace There's elements in yeah. each of them. So when you're dosing them together, you're getting that back into your system. Yeah. You upgraded your, your uh, testing, I, I saw. Did. I got all the HANA checkers now. I did get made fun of because I bought the uh, small little, <laughs> what do they call that over there? Got the, the, you, got the, you got the API system. API, that's, yeah, that's cheaped the out beginner. there. I went big everywhere else, but I cheaped out on the test kit. So now I got all the HANA checkers for alkalinity, calcium, and let's see. Did you get the one for uh, phosphate? Phosphate, yep. Yep, okay, phosphate. cool. Yeah. yeah. I got the automatic feeder. That's going on okay. the tank. I do have a custom lid coming, custom acrylic okay. lid, so I need to get that measurement so I can send that over. So the whole tank will be covered. Uh, it's pretty much like a wire mesh along the borders there uh -huh. and then the center is pretty much all open because i am putting some expensive fish in here and i just can't take a chance of them getting out of the tank yeah no kidding yeah. so tell us about what your stocking plans are uh i have an achilles going in about three inch achilles already purchased just sitting in quarantine at the local fish store i also have about a four inch purple tang those will pretty much be the two center pieces i'll probably let the tank kind of sit for a little bit after that and then I'll probably just go into the coral game. I want some really high-end, expensive corals. You know, I might get into fragging a little bit down the line. I don't really want too many fish, to be honest with you. I really just want a couple show pieces, maybe two sets of clowns. Maybe some wrasses. A couple wrasses, that's it. I mean, you see some of these tanks and they have 20, 30, 40 fish. That's not what I'm really into. I want to go more of like the coral route. Okay. Fair enough. But your fish do feature coral. This so, true, you know, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. It doesn't hurt, and with the filtration that you have down below, you could you could crank up on the fish too, and that just helps out the entire system. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, but I think I think your choices are pretty good so far. I like the little clowns; they're cute, and they'll grow too. I mean, oh, yeah. mine was mine when I bought my uh, my. It's not a frost bite; it's a flurry. When I bought my flurry, it was about that size. And now, you know, it's it's about like that. But yeah, it was one of my first videos that I did, you know, buying a saltwater uh, fish, so, yeah. So, I did yeah. get these on uh, Live Aquaria. That was my first online purchase. I gotta say, I'm pretty happy, you know, they both look healthy. Yep. Uh, if you do through the diver's den, they have like their own little quarantine process where they go through like three, I think it's three to four weeks minimum before they'll actually ship the fish out. They yep. do an inspection and everything. I didn't want to just buy a random fish at a random store, throw it in there, and then, deal with it or any kind of issue from that. So I am very selective of what I'm gonna put in the tank and the quarantine process is very important. Yeah, well they look great. Well thanks again Tim for letting me film this adventure with you, for letting me uh, do this and down the line we'll definitely get some updates from you. I know everybody in the Real Reefing fam definitely wants to see that. So with that, you guys can check out my new other videos right over here. You can subscribe to the channel right over here and y'all be salty now. Later. <laughs>